Okay, this is a, a tactical technician video from Diagnation. And today's video is gonna be shot kinda, I'm gonna try to make it raw and rough. Uh, <laughs> that may be sound a little mis a little strange, but nonetheless, it basically means I'm gonna, I'm gonna title this video um, uh, Misfiring with the, the U-Scope from AES Wave. It is a one channel scope, very powerful scope um, that uh, we're gonna use in this case to strictly concentrate on misfires if we were presented with a misfire. And the first thing I wanna talk about is the underlying symptom. As you can see, the U-scope is on. Um, we've got a, th uh, a bunch of things going on here to create situations and a bunch of peripherals in which we're gonna to use to diagnose misfires. We're gonna use amp clamps, we're gonna use delta sensors, we're gonna use a WPS in different places. And uh, you can see one there in the, the tailpipe. And basically, let's talk about a misfire, the underlying symptom, um, how that may be presented to any tech, to a mobile tech, to somebody who wants to determine what to call, well, to first verify that it is a misfire, and secondly, verify um, what cylinder it is and why the combustion process is not happening. Is it mechanical? Is it fuel? Is it spark? Is it a non-reality misfire? Maybe the crank variation isn't learned and the, the, the check engine light is on, but the car isn't misfiring. Uh, most likely the customer is going to be feeling something. If it's a four-cylinder, very much so. Six-cylinder, maybe not as much. Eight-cylinder, they may have to rely on the check engine light um, either being on or blinking or in that capacity. So as far as initially when we look at something like this, we would scan it. We would look for DTCs, PO300, PO301, 234 up the line, um, PO200 injector circuit, um, PO250. Five, PO351, 23 ignition primary circuit, a check engine light blinking. Um, also, as I've said before, um, it's rare, but sometimes a binding, something binding in the um, serpentine belt can cause a misfire or a crank sensor um, sensing a, a slowing of the crank speed due to something bound up in the serpentine belt. I've even heard view joints, if they freeze up, sometimes whatever the crankshaft, that load on the crank, will slow the crank down and hence it will, re will rack up misfires. So basically, I'm gonna start out with engine, I'm gonna start out with, um, uh, we, we, we've scanned the vehicle and we've, we, we see a misfire, we see a 300, maybe a 301, and um, we wanna start out with engine mechanical. So I'm gonna start out with relative compression um, in basically two ways. I wanna do it with an amp clamp, and I wanna do it with a, with a, with a, with a sensor in the tailpipe just to see, and I will create a, a compression loss just to see kind of what that anomaly would look like. And, um, and we, would, we, would, we would follow that trail how we see, if we see a relative compression that shows us an anomaly. So um, it's gonna be a little rough. Um, the camera may move around a lot in this, um, in this video. I'm just gonna do it as if we were making a living out in the field and we had to diagnose a customer's misfire. And first of all, let me get you to, I have the, the, the U-scope Velcroed to the firewall to the best of my ability. Um, so let's hope this uh, is a little bit of a good shoot, a little bent there. Um, come on, Velcro. Boy, that guy that invented Velcro. What a, what a dude, man. Uh, okay. Okay, man. All right, can we see that screen? Okay. All right, I'm gonna start with relative compression. We uh, we have a uh, we have something telling us we got a misfire, we got a rough running, we got a code, and we want to prove out engine mechanical. Super important. So I'm gonna start out with a um, with an amp clamp, and I'm gonna take a look at the uh, at the screen. This will be shot in multiple parts. This video, I will try to uh, you know maybe do a, a mechanical part, a fuel part, an ignition part, but you know it may it may uh, morph from there in any direction. Nonetheless, the bottom line is to determine if the car is misfiring and what cylinder is misfiring and why it's misfiring. Let me get the scope uh, channel set up for relative compression. I'm gonna give it a wing and see where I am and I'll make my adjustments. Nothing there. The clamp is on, it's the Pico High Amp Clamp 2200. Um, we're not getting much action as a conversion factor. Um, mm. Let's see, go down, down, down. Okay. Okay. We are not hooked up. See, there's so many ways to shoot yourself in the foot. I've done them all. God damn, my bad. Okay, <laughs> see, 
when you're scoping, concentration is really important. You don't want nobody bugging you. If you kind of get get in your get in a nice zone, you got a lot to be you know to be mindful of. It's a lot different than using a scan tool because you got leads, you got safety, you got your safety, you got your equipment, things like that. Anyway, let me um. Okay, we're too high. We got to bring the voltage down. Okay. Let's see. Now we're looking at relative compression. Now this is our first initial set. Now we still got to come down some more. Um, okay. That looks okay. I mean, I wanted to have more more stretch. Let me go there. Okay. Looking at relative compression. Okay, you can see it. Okay. That looks good. Um, oh, that was great. Good job. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. ground we come down we hit here ground position down 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 on I want to give you a good relative compression I want to give some granularity there we go okay that's good relative compression right there okay now I'm going to create a compression loss to see what the anomaly would look like here we go take a look at the screen all right you know it you have to see that anomaly there anomaly just went away okay just keep an eye on that. I will go to the tailpipe. I'll keep it running. I got to switch some leads. Um, and we're going to look at a transducer in the tailpipe, which also will show us our compression integrity. Um, See what we got here. I'm a little cockeyed, half cocked. Okay. Mm. Right, more stretch. Okay. All right. Keep an eye on the screen. I'll give you more ground. Get ground offset. Keep looking up for an anomaly now. It's going to be a... Okay, looks good. That's good, Frank, and you can see it. Okay, now I'm going to create the compression loss, and I want to get her into the... Okay, take a look that's good. Okay, now if we lost compression, it would look like... anomaly on the tailpipe wasn't the best nonetheless um let me get that uh so we've uh pretty much determined that we have a compression loss in a situation like this so now we're going to go in cylinder and take a look at uh what in cylinder looks like we're using a wps 500 in the hole cranking and uh we'll make an anal analysis of what the cylinder looks like we got the plug out we got the pico hose in we're going to be on range one and we got a conversion factor of 10 millivolts per psi and i'll show you on the the capture once we get it and this is going to be just cranking and then i probably maybe i'll do it running um and uh we can take a look but basically the, 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 the gist of this is to, to diagnose misfires so i'm going to turn the P wps on let it let it zero out go back to range one to the hose basically we got a lead going to the transducer coming through the hood all right I will take a look at this. Let me get the ground. Okay, ground position. 
down and let's take a look at what we look like now we're just gonna we're gonna crank and look at the transducer what it looks like i'll help make some time and voltage adjustment They're way too way too stretched let's give it some more okay a little bit more okay A little time. I'll stop the scope. I'll freeze it. Okay, we've frozen the scope. I'm gonna pull it off the Velcro. You, know, you can see it, I'll keep it there. And we're gonna look at our pressure. We're gonna move a cursor, our vertical cursors down. Okay, V1. Let's go the other way. Okay, I'm going to the tower. You can see I'm going to hit that top of the tower. I want to see how much compression. It's going to be in millivolts. We're going to do a conversion. Okay, we can see it. On the top, you see 1.96 volts. Okay, so it's 10 millivolts per PSI. That is, um, we would uh, say that if that was 1,960 millivolts divided by 10, we are about 196 PSI. That's pretty good crank and compression. So... You know, if we were chasing a misfire, we would know that that, uh, that most likely is a, is a good-looking uh, um, compression waveform. Okay, let's get back to some other stuff here and uh, talk about a, possibly a running test. Just because I know we're, we're, we're doing everything cranking, but while I have the transistor in there, and when you do in time, you know, when your battery life is important and time is on the, of the essence as it is in this line of work, we will want to do a running compression and then I'll kind of analyze that and we'll take a look at that. And then I may uh, call this the end of this video. So vehicle, I've got the um, injector disconnected. So I don't want fuel going in that cylinder because I know it's not going to be firing. Okay. And now we want to go to, uh, let me start it up and I'll make some adjustments on the run. Okay, we're running on two cylinders. Here we go. Let me get that puppy, uh, that ground, uh, this is up. okay, we're running, let me get a little, all right, looks pretty good, we'll make a little bit of time, okay, there we go, take a look at that, and we'll freeze it, and we'll talk about it. All right, we're frozen. I'm gonna shut the car off. We'll talk about this waveform. All right, probably talk about this waveform. We can see a, a firing cycle. Um, I'm gonna get our vertical cursors. We can see our, uh, our pockets are good. Nothing looks really too out of the ordinary, but I wanna see how we make a conversion with this. I'm gonna do the best I can to convert this. Uh, let me, kind of get a better uh maybe i can do this i can do this okay i'm gonna go to the cursors and uh down 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 okay now vertical cursor how about time cursors for uh t1 t1 i'm gonna go to the top of the tower here you, you maybe not can you see that oh i overshot the runway top of the tower okay Okay, let me get a little bit of... Okay, that's top of the tower. Now we'll go to cursor two. We're gonna talk about milliseconds. Okay, you can see that cursor moving. And... Okay. We're looking at, I've got the difference.
I'm sorry, the delta T is 112 milliseconds, okay? So it's 720 degrees, okay, 720 degrees per, it's 720 degrees divided by 112 is degrees per millisecond, okay. Calculator, cell phone. Okay, so I'm gonna get 720 degrees divided by 112, 720 divided by 112 equals 6.4 degrees per millisecond. Okay, 6.4 degrees per millisecond. And Hundred and twelve divided by four. I got twenty-eight milliseconds. Will get us to bottom dead center. That's basically what I want to show you. Okay, we've got one twelve divided by four. So I want to go twenty. I want the delta to be twenty-eight milliseconds. I want to move one of the cursors. Cursors the T cursor uh, this way. So I get 28 milliseconds. And then we're gonna look when the exhaust valve opens. Delta. Okay, you see what I'm doing? I'm cutting it in four. 24 milliseconds, I'm gonna go the other way. 28 milliseconds, that's that's pretty much, okay, right there is kind of like a, if we had a, you know, a Pico or something where we could, or, that's where our exhaust valve is opening. Okay, it right when it shoots off. So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna roll the other cursor um, to see our degrees it's opening, our exhaust valve opening. So I'm gonna roll uh, um, cursor T1, move it this way, right when it comes off its seat. Okay, okay. The milliseconds is 5.6 milliseconds. So it's 6.4 um, degrees per millisecond. So 6.4 times five, I'm gonna say about 37 degrees. So that's probably pretty good. That's probably pretty good. Nonetheless, um, that's our that's our in cylinder. I don't want to OD on this and make it a, a, a all big in cylinder because I want to. This is basically the gist of this is to check misfires. I gotta say that's pretty good. Our plateau is good along here. Okay, our our exhaust plateau here is good. Um, our pockets look good. Um, you could keep measuring this if you had to. If you had the cylinder under suspicion for a mechanical fault, you keep using your cursors with this scope, you'd convert um, um, degrees into milliseconds. But nonetheless, um, I want to get to the next phase of the video, um, which is going to be um, to look at fuel and spark. So anyway, I'm going to end this video now. And in part two, I'll start to get, I'll come back with fuel and spark. Thanks for watching.